All right, sorry, these videos, I don't like them to splice, so I just stop them and start them again. I'm sorry about that. But you know, like these tabletops that I do, I try to give as much information to you guys as I can. So we're talking about the neck. Now, if you look at it, that is definitely not Jackson Speed neck. That is definitely not Ibanez Wizard. So I don't want this guitar. It is too wide of a neck. Slap yourself in the head twice for saying, I used to think that way. I used to think flat and wide was the only way to go. And then when I discovered this neck and other necks, like for example, my SG61 reissue, which has a, a thinner neck than this. Uh, my SG standard, I think this is about the same thickness. So Les Paul SG, I really, you know, like it doesn't feel like a baseball bat, like a Telecaster or a Stratocaster. Uh, you can't feel the frets at all on the side of this thing. You can't even feel the binding on it, to be honest with you. It's so smooth. I'm starting to learn that the smoothness of the neck is probably even more important than the profile because nothing binds you up. And then the width of the neck, because I'm used to playing eight strings, seven string, uh, 12 string guitar, uh, this neck feels narrow, right? But if I play it in comparison to my Gibson, the Gibson, it feels even more narrow, like my uh, two uh, SGs, they feel my 61 reissue and my SG3, which technically still plays better than this guitar because of the shorter scale. But this neck is more refined, uh, although the fret works better on the Gibson. But that said, by how much, I don't know, because there's not a single buzzing fret on this guitar. It is really, really incredible. Uh, that neck will spoil you. If you go into a star, uh, I'll only say this. If you see the guitar, definitely try it. But don't try the guitar if you can't afford to buy it because it will give you the fever. <laughs> it, it will. I am, like, again, I this, I know how to pick a guitar that's good. I know how to pick a guitar that will do what you want to do if you know what you're looking for. There's so many guys out there telling you the pickups don't matter. Oh, tone wood don't matter. Oh, the scale length don't matter. Nothing matters. It's all, you know, just either just the speaker or, you know, effects or whatever and EQing. They're wrong. <laughs> They're wrong. It's not opinion. Is You will notice it when you play something like this. Now, when I choose a guitar, one of the first things I do is choose playability over tone. Uh, tuning stability over tone. Tone is last. Now, if this guitar sucked ass in sound-wise, and you can never tell from the video, because like when you hear my videos, like like if you hear Mark Holcomb playing this guitar uh, in the commercial, that you know, like in his commercials, they sound absolutely brilliant because he's got a ten thousand dollars or hundred thousand dollars studio processing the sound for him so that you can get the most accurate representation of the guitar. For me, you're hearing me play through a hundred dollar amp, through a fifteen hundred dollar cabinet, through a uh, you know a hundred dollar eighty dollar foot pedal. You know what I mean? So that's you got to factor that in there. That said, I've already recorded with this guitar, uh, very clear. The Alpha and Omega pickups are probably the clearest pickups I've ever used on any guitar. Yes, pickups matter. Clarity matters. Why? Because it cuts through the mix. You can hear the notes. It's not just, okay, it sounds, it's a cool sounding distortion you got there, but what the hell are you playing? No, it sounds great. This is a very professional guitar. Uh, SE, I think it stands for student edition. Well, yeah, that's a hell, it's a, pro, it's a pro guitar, guys. Like, it's about as good as a guitar can get. And I've said, you can buy a guitar between $1,200 and $1,600. That'll be better than any other guitar out there on the market or as good as any guitar out there on the market. Like, if you paid $10,000 for this guitar, which would be ridiculous, but if you pay $10,000 for this guitar, uh, it's not going to be play any better than what this one does. <laughs> you know, uh, I have yet to try a guitar over $10,000, which I have, that plays better than this. I'm not saying they don't play as well, but I'm saying, you know, if you hunt around, you can find the deal. Bang for the buck. This is, you know, you get everything. You get the glitziness. Maybe you like the quilted top. Maybe you don't, whatever. Maybe you like the style. Maybe you don't. But I can guarantee you, even if you didn't like PRSs, and, and my thing about the PRSs is, is that when I first tried a core model, uh, am I doing for time here? Back in the 90s, and I told this story in the, with the seven string, is it was a case of never meet your heroes. I've always imagined myself with this, this neck in my hand with the, the bird inlays, right? Everybody remembers that PRS back in the, the late 80s, early 90s with the dragon inlays and the, you know, the custom 24 and that whale blue with the dragon inlay. It was like a $10,000 guitar. I never seen one of those, but I always seen the custom 24 
core model. And I remember trying it one day and the first thing I noticed was the neck was really narrow and it felt like I was playing a Stratocaster. And I was, and then it had, uh, didn't have a switch. It had um, a rotary knob and it just, it killed it for me. I'm just like, that won't work for me because live, I don't sit, like I, I use all the pickups, you know, I'm, you know, that this switch moves around a lot for me. Uh, it just wouldn't work for a metal guy. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I, I, I put it in the, the Stratocaster, Telecaster, SG Les Paul classic sounding guitars, which wasn't a modern sound. Although I've always sounded they, they sounded great, but the neck just didn't do it for me, right? But then this thing comes along. This is the only PRS I've ever played that plays like like this is the the this is the the odd man out. This is the black sheep of the PRSs. There is no other PRS that's quite like this. Um, you know, I don't know if they do any more satin finish necks with the wet satting, and this is not a normal satin finish neck. Yeah, you can get a lot of guitars with satin finished neck in this price range and even cheaper, but not not down to this. I've only seen one bad review of this guitar. And one cool thing I, that always got me with the PRS is I never thought I would like the heel joint, but I noticed that this neck, it goes on, it goes on, it goes on, it goes on. Like you don't even get to there. Like you're already past the 24th fret by the time you, your thumb gets there. It's actually a really innovative and cool anchoring point. I have... You know, it's not smooth. Like usually you always want that as smooth as possible. But I do like the anchoring point. Who knew? Well designed. You know, some things you can't judge by looking at. You got to try them, right? So I have no affiliation with this guitar. Uh, I don't make any money off of it or anything like that. This is just a guy on the internet telling you what I think of this guitar. I've only seen two bad reviews of this guitar. One guy it was on the seven string. He said he didn't like the, the style of it. So that was opinion. So that don't matter. If you like the style, you do. If you don't, you don't. Uh, the only thing he complained about, he said that his neck was sticky. I'm like, are you kidding me? I got two guitars in a row that have the smoothest necks of any guitars I've ever played in my life. And again, uh, thousands of guitars I probably tried over the years. I'm 50 years old. And I'm just like, Bleh. like it's, it's, it's so smooth. It's incredible. You know, it's incredible. It makes the guitar, this guitar would be just an average guitar It'd be a cool guitar, but it'd be an average guitar without it. But he he, he was the only guy, and then he had a, a problem uh, with, uh, I think, uh, something let go, a wire let go on that, on one of the seven. That was the only bad review I've ever seen of these guitars. And who knows how that happened. Now, I said in the previous video that this guitar wasn't perfect, right? And it isn't. Okay, it looks perfect. I mean, look at it. It's gorgeous, right? Okay, so I ordered the guitar right, from uh, the arts music store in, Ham uh, um, uh, not Hamilton, uh, Newmarket, Ontario, or just outside Newmarket, right, and anyway, the guitar was in stock for about a month, month and a half, same with the Holcomb guitar, so in February, I bought the, uh, the se sorry, the seven string I bought in, in February, uh, when I paid my credit card, I was like, okay, I can do this one, but after this one, I, you know, I got to pay them down a little bit before, I buy anything else. Uh, so anyway, of the guitars that I had on my list for the last past couple of years, this one wasn't really one of them. But on the other hand, it was a guitar of interest. Could it do the things I needed it to do? And after getting the seven string, I'm like, well, the six string version of this would be just absolutely awesome. So I called the store up. I said, yeah, I'll take it. You know what I mean? And I bought a couple of, you know, like in the last past year, I bought like uh, four, like four or five. Okay, I got the eight string. I got the Jackson Rhodes V, the RR5T, which is still a hooligan of a guitar. Um, and I'll be comparing all those guitars too. I got the seven string from them and I've got the, uh, the that Ibanez Geo bass from them, the five string. And then I got this right? I think that's all I bought from. So I bought a lot of guitars from these guys in a short amount of time. So when I call uh, the guy, like any, anybody you deal with there, they're, they're really, they're really good staff there. Uh, shout out to Ryan, uh, does a hell of a job. So anyway, Ryan's like, oh, thanks for all the guitars you buy from us, man. You know, like, you know, it helps, right? And he's like, yeah, I'll, we'll get that out there for you. Well, the next day he goes, he goes, that should go to either late today or early tomorrow. Well, the next day he call, he, he sends me an email and he calls me. He's like, Reg, yeah, he says, we found a problem with the guitar because before any guitar goes out of that shop, they do a an inspection. I don't know how many point inspection. Uh, let me do it for time. I want to wrap this up fairly soon. But they do an inspection, right? 
And he says, Reg, there's a problem with the guitar. I'm like, oh no, is it the electrics? Is it, you know, there a big crack in it, uh, whatever. And he goes, there's some scratches we found when they were cleaning up the guitar and, uh, you know, checking it over. And they're like, uh, you know, let us know what you want to do. Well, there is scratches on this guitar. Now, I'm not going to ding PRS for this because I don't know where it is. Can you see it? Okay, let me get closer. Yeah, right there. They caught that. I don't know if you can see that little dot at the end of my thumb. My bad eyes can barely see it. And I think that it feels like it's on the outside of the paint, but it might be on the under. That might be a PRS quality control issue. It might be. The second one, now this one's probably some jackass came into the store. Can you see it? Wait, I gotta find it. Uh, need my bad eyes. Okay, yeah, right. I don't know if I can get it. Can you see there's right about there is there's a little surface scuff on it. Now, is that from PRS? Probably not. Probably somebody in the store with a leather jacket with buckles on it and shit like that. Uh, you always get those guys, you know, that don't have the common sense. Of, Why are they telling me to take my jacket off? <laughs> say, take your jacket off. Especially half those jackasses don't buy the thing, right? You buy it, you can scratch it up all you want. But you scratch my guitar. Right? You picked up in broad daylight and you scratched it. Scratch. So, the plot thickens. What happened after that? Dun, dun, dun.